Hello and thank you so much for joining me for this video today. Now the last treatment that I done was a fractional radio frequency microneedling treatment. I used my uber powerful super sleep pro grade machine, the one that we use in the Medispa. And unlike many of the home use devices, the wattage on this is seriously high which means that after a treatment, it's really important to let your skin rest and recover and start regenerating all of that collagen. Now the radio frequency videos on my channel are the most watched and they are also the ones that I get the most questions on. I have plenty of experience with at home radio frequency skin tightening machines and in office ones. And I don't only understand how my own skin responds to it, but also that of my clients. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do my second treatment with my professional machine and I'm going to answer some of the most commonly asked questions about radio frequency as I do it. Now the fractional radio frequency machine that I use is this beauty right here. This is the radio frequency microneedling machine from Plasma Perfecting. For today's treatment I'm not actually going to be using the microneedling attachment but instead I'm going to be using the nano tip. The nano tip as you can see right here it has no needles, it's a gold plate and boy does this heat the skin up. Now I'm sure some of you have already got questions about this before I've even started so hopefully I'm going to be able to cover what it is that you're thinking about today. But if you do have a question about radio frequency skin tightening or radio frequency skin treatments that I haven't covered in today's video all you've got to do is drop them in the comment section down below and I'm going to try to get back to you. Now as I'm using the nano tip for the radio frequency device I need to make sure that I'm using a really high quality super conductive conductive gel and for that I'm going to be using the HR booster gel from Medicube. It contains ringer solution, it's loaded up with so many skin boosting goodies and when it comes to conductivity it's unbeatable. So if you're looking for a conductive gel that delivers on all fronts then this is the one that I swear by. Now when doing radio frequency you need to make sure that your skin is really clean and clear and free from dirt and grime and makeup and oil or any other stuff that's going to kind of prevent the frequency from penetrating into the skin. So you've got to start with a beautifully clean face which I already have today. And this is the perfect canvas for applying your conductive gel. Now I'm going to apply the conductive gel now, I'm going to set the machine up and then I'm going to crack on with answering your most commonly asked radio frequency skin tightening treatment questions. So I'm going to go and get everything set up, but with the beauty of the internet, it's going to transition right now into the questions. Okay, so everything's set up and I'm good to start the treatment. So the first question that I get asked is, how does radio frequency skin tightening work? So basically, radio frequency skin tightening is a non-invasive treatment that uses energy in the form of radio frequency waves, which heats the skin's tissues and stimulates collagen production, contraction, and tightening of the skin. Ow, that's hot. Now during a treatment, radio frequency is applied to the skin as I'm doing right here. And when it comes into contact with the skin and you activate the frequency, it emits electromagnetic waves. And these waves can penetrate into the skin's deeper layers, which is exactly where you want them to be. Now as these electromagnetic waves pass through the skin, they cause the collagen structures to contract. So they go from being kind of baggy and loose to being really tight which ultimately causes the skin on the surface to look tighter and firmer too. But alongside this collagen contraction, then what happens is the body starts its natural healing process, which results in the production of fresh collagen over time. Now, as time passes and the collagen production increases, what happens is that the skin starts to look firmer, it looks plumper, looks more hydrated, and overall it just looks more youthful. And that's pretty much how radio frequency skin tightening works. So the next most common radio frequency skin tightening question I get asked is, what temperature do I need to reach to achieve skin tightening with radio frequency? Now the temperature that you're gonna need will really vary depending on the area that you're treating and the kind of skin conditions that you're looking at taking care of. But generally the temperature that we're looking for in radio frequency skin tightening is between 38 to 42 degrees Celsius or 100.4 to 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the goal of radio frequency skin tightening is to heat the skin to a precise temperature, one that stimulates collagen production. But ultimately the temperatures used will depend on your skin type, any ongoing or underlying skin conditions that you have, the treatment area and the desired level of skin tightening. But these temperatures are exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so the next question is a big one and it's the one that I think features the most on all of my videos across my channel and that is how often can I use radio frequency skin tightening? 
or how often should I perform at radio frequency treatment? Now for the purpose of this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be talking about at home devices, not the kind that I'm using right now, which is a professional device, but I'm on about my old faithful, the triangular radio frequency device that I have, or the kind of radio frequency that you'll find inside the Mini HiFi 3 and one when it comes to manufacturers instructions you want to take them with a grain of salt a lot of them are telling people to use these devices every single day which is insane just because they are at home device and the wattage is low it doesn't mean that you're going to get results by using it every single day from all of my learnings and from my training what i've found is that the at home devices can safely be used once a week preferably for up to around about eight to ten weeks after which point you want to drop it back to every couple of weeks or every couple of months. Basically the way that I look at it is that you use it until you start seeing the kind of results that you're after, then you step it down so that you can maintain those results in the long term. But why is it not a good idea to use these devices every single day, constantly and consistently, year on year out? First of all, overusing radio frequency, whether it's a home device or a professional one, can cause damage to your skin and it can cause destruction of facial fat cells. For the majority of people, holding onto that facial fat is a really important part of maintaining a youthful complexion because facial fat is something that we see in the teenage years, it tends to kind of thin off in the early 20s, and then by the time you reach your 30s, you you start getting fat in areas where you're meant to be thin and you get thin where you're meant to be fat. So maintaining facial fat is really important. But also by treating the skin every single day, what you're doing is you're breaking down those collagen strands and those collagen structures in the skin, which is the first part of the radio frequency process. But you're not giving your body time to replace that collagen or to get to work on the healing process. So what would I personally do? I would use my device weekly for around about eight to 10 weeks or until I start noticing the results in my skin. Again, it depends on how much work you need to do or what you're looking to treat. If you've got extremely lax skin with minimal levels of elastin and collagen in it, then obviously you're gonna to need to do a few more weeks of treatment before you move on to bi-weekly or monthly and then stepping it down to every couple of months. But if you're reasonably young, 40 or under, and your skin is in reasonable condition, you've got fine lines and wrinkles, you've got some sagging going on, then weekly for eight weeks, and then move on to monthly for, I would say around about six months, and then move on to like every couple of months from there to maintain. And I've got to do this side now. Okay, so next question. Does wattage matter when it comes to buying a radio frequency machine? And the answer to this is absolutely. The higher the wattage on the device is, the deeper the penetration is gonna be and the more heat you're gonna be able to achieve, which is gonna give you more significant results, such as with my professional grade radio frequency machine right here. But the higher the wattage is, the more thermal damage that you'll experience, which can lead to more downtime and an increased risk of side effects. Now the machine that I'm using here for the facial zones, it reaches a maximum of 150 watts. When using it on the body function, I can achieve up to 300 watts, which kind of makes sense because the body tends to be a lot thicker and denser and the skin is not the same as your face. Now, when looking at at-home radio frequency machines or devices, just as an example, the Mini HiFi 3-in-1, the wattage on this is super low compared to a professional grade machine. And in fact, many home use devices are between one to 10 watts. But low is not always a bad thing, especially when you're first starting it out or you're not quite sure what you're doing. So while a higher wattage device is definitely going to give you hugely more noticeable results, the risks that come with using them are also hugely increased. So you've got to know what you're doing or you go to a professional to have it done, which is where people like me come into play. But as with everything when it comes to any kind of frequency or treatment that you're performing on your body or your face, super important that you seek professional advice first, that you know that you're a suitable candidate for it, and that you use any guidance, whether it's mine or anybody else's on online or offline, as guidance only. That's about it for that one. You'll notice when I'm treating myself, I'm not spending too much time doing my upper cheek area because I like my upper cheeks to be a little bit podgy and fat. And also my problem areas are always my jawline and my jowls, absolute nightmare. I'm trying to kind of get them back into a condition that I'm happy with. It's taking time, but baby steps slowly, but surely I'm getting there. It's like that turtle and the snail thing. Turtle and the snail? It's not, is it? Well, that story about the animals that race each other and one's really slow, but it wins anyway, that one. The next question is one that I get asked almost daily across my videos, and that is, can you have radio frequency skin tightening treatments after you've had Botox or fillers? And the simple answer to this is yes. 
And before anyone accuses me of having Botox in my face, my face is moving. I don't have Botox in my face. I don't have fillers in my face. I've used them in the past. I'm not ashamed of that. I love this stuff. But for the purpose of my skincare journey and understanding how things actually work, I'm kind of just focusing more on my devices again. But anyway, back to the question, is it safe to use radio frequency if you've had Botox? Now, Botox is a neurotoxin that works by relaxing the muscles. Botox works in the muscles and radio frequency works within the dermis and the epidermis. But the concern that people have isn't so much about the different layers of skin that you're using treatments in, but it's from the heat that's created by the radio frequency. Is it gonna break down or disrupt the Botox? Now, if you've had Botox, for example, yesterday and you use radio frequency, then the heat caused by the radio frequency really could disrupt the way that the Botox works and it could cause the toxin to break down and you wouldn't kind of get the results that you wanted. Now, there would be some effect, but it would be minimal and there's also a risk that you're gonna end up pushing it into areas you don't want it. So what you wanna do is you want to wait around about 14 days. This gives the toxin a chance to kind of take effect within the muscles and once it is working, the heat from radio frequency isn't going to cause it to break down any faster. The way that Botox stops working over time is that the body metabolizes it, it's eliminated from your system, and then you go to the doctor again for jabby jabby. The same is true for fillers like hyaluronic acid. The heat isn't going to break down the filler. It could cause it to slightly migrate to other areas, could cause it to flatten down. But ultimately, radio frequency skin tightening treatments are perfectly safe to have done after you've had Botox or filler. Your face isn't going to drop off. That wasn't my face dropping off, I just knocked my conductive gel. Things are going to be a-okay. And we're going to do under the chin. Let's go for some of that submental chin fat. Another question that I get asked really often is, can radio frequency safely be used on the body? And the simple answer to that is yes. Now, when it comes to using radio frequency on the body, the home devices, you can use them, but they're going to be pretty ineffective. And that's because the way that the body is made up is different to the way that the facial structure is made up. Now, on the face, especially if you're using fractional radio frequency or radio frequency microneedling, you're going to be going around about one millimeter maximum. That's all you need to do. When it comes to the body, you're going to be looking at going up to around about three millimeters and the temperature is going to be a lot hotter. You can use radio frequency to treat your bingo wings. You can use it on a sagging chest. You can use it on your stomach, on your muffin top. You can use it on your butt cheeks, on your thighs. In some clinics, they even have radio frequency devices that go in your hoo-ha and tighten everything up in there, ouch. But radio frequency can be an amazing way to kind of help restore the tone and texture of your skin on your body and the overall shape of it. Okay, I'm pretty much done with the radio frequency side of my treatment now. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take my cold hammer. It's gonna bring my skin temperature down rapidly. So the skin on this side has had time to kind of cool down nicely now, naturally. What it's gonna do is it's gonna bring that temperature down really, really quickly and just soothe the whole area because it's feeling a little bit burny right now. But yeah, basically, radio frequency is probably fine to use on the body. Obviously, if you have a pacemaker or you've got other components of your body that come from somewhere else that haven't developed within your body but have been put there instead medically, really good idea to get professional advice first. When it comes to treating the neck, you can treat the neck, but you really want to be avoiding the thyroid, the larynx, basically anywhere on the center line, down to the clavicle area. The thyroid produces a lot of hormones that control the body and you really don't want to go disrupting all of that or potentially causing issues with your thyroid for the sake of trying to get the skin a little bit tighter, which, you know, you could do with different treatments such as microneedling or chemical pills or PDO threads. So a lot of people ask me, what devices would I recommend them to use at home? Now, I don't know you, I don't know your skin conditions, I don't know what it is that you're looking to achieve. So I can only ever talk about what's worked for me, what I've done, and the things that I find work. Now, obviously, one of these beauties that I'm using right now, my ProGrade device, it's a pretty pricey machine, but the results, again, are super significant compared to most of the other devices. But I've not always had this, and, and I did start my journey with a completely different device now, that one is packed away, my triangular beauty star device, radio frequency machine. And I really can't be bothered to go and dig it out. <laughs> but if you're looking for a multifunctional machine that targets your skin in three different ways, which is with radio frequency, it's with high intensity focused ultrasound or HIFU and EMS. The second generation mini HIFU is an absolute bargain. 
Now you can pick these up from Amazon, normally for less than $100 now. If you're in the UK, you're looking at between 60 to 70 pounds for one of these devices. Now these home use devices are actually surprisingly potent and they work really well. And it's because the combination of the three frequencies. Obviously you have EMS, which tightens up the muscles. It can help give more definition and bulk to areas, especially if you use it on the cheeks, around the jaws. If you're trying to lift and tighten and kind of sculpt, you have the high intensity focused ultrasound or the HIFU, which reaches into the smash layer and causes all of that contraction and kind of provides really awesome foundations for the overlying skin. And then you've got the radio frequency which is built into these two crescent shaped sides. Now I will only ever buy these off of Amazon. I don't get them off of eBay. I don't get them from other suppliers where the prices have been marked up. I go to Amazon where they come straight from the source. Great thing about Amazon is if you don't like it or it doesn't work for you properly, you're well protected, you can return it and you get refunded. No questions asked, no problems. So yeah, Amazon is where I would recommend to get this. And I'm gonna throw some links for this where I've purchased these from Amazon before. Now when it comes to Amazon reviews on these products, it's important to remember that there's a lot of competition, not just between other sellers on Amazon, but other websites externally who come in and they will leave a negative review for a product and they will put in someone off making a purchase and driving them to themselves. And occasionally you have people who overestimate the power and performance of a machine. They use it once. They don't really notice any changes on the couple of hours after they've used it. Instantly assume it doesn't work. Again, take it with a grain of salt. Now, as someone who's used these devices over several years now, and I've showcased them on my videos and the results before and after, these Amazon devices really can work. Now, if you've got metal work in your mouth, you've got fillings, you've got braces, and you don't want to be applying EMS over the top of it or the electric muscle stimulation, you can go for the first generation Mini Haifu, which is just as powerful. The design is slightly different. Again, the two crescent shapes on here are where the radio frequency comes out. The Haifu comes from the center section. This one is a two-in-one device. This one is the three-in-one. This one is also roughly half the price of this one now. So I'm gonna throw some links for this one as well for those of you who are budget conscious. I get we're in a cost of living crisis at the moment, it's even getting me. So I'm just gonna throw some links down there just in case you wanna use it as like a jumping point to kind of find something else or whatever, you know. We have these two devices here which have got radio frequency built in. And then of course we have my original beauty which looks just like this because I can't find it at the moment because it's packed away. But this is what it looks like. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. So I've done my treatment, I've answered your questions, but if you do have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. I'm gonna try my darndest to get to them and answer them for you. If you're interested in any of these products that I featured in this video and you wanna know where I get them from and or if I've got discount codes, which I have discount codes, of course I have discount codes, you'll find them in the description box of this video. But thank you so much for joining me for this video today. It's so good to get back in front of the camera and just to kind of just chat with you guys. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day today and enjoy the rest of your week. And I really look forward to seeing you in my next video, which I promise is not gonna be too far away in the future now that I'm back to filming. But yeah, that's about it. So I guess this is the part where I say TJ over and out. <laughs>